Top 25 Security Architect Interview Questions and Answers In the fast-evolving world of cybersecurity, security architects play a crucial role in designing and implementing robust security systems. This video presents the top 25 interview questions that candidates may encounter when pursuing a position in this field. By exploring these questions and their corresponding answers, viewers will gain valuable insights into what employers are looking for. This resource will help candidates prepare effectively and enhance their chances of success in security architect interviews. 1. Can you describe a time when you had to design a security architecture for a complex system? What were the main considerations? In one project, I designed a security architecture for a multi-tier application handling sensitive financial data. Key considerations included ensuring data confidentiality, integrity, and availability. I implemented a layered security approach, incorporating firewalls, intrusion detection systems, and encryption. Additionally, I focused on access controls, ensuring role-based permissions were established to limit exposure of sensitive information. Compliance with regulations, such as GDPR, was paramount, and regular audits were planned to assess vulnerabilities. Collaboration with development teams ensured security was integrated throughout the software lifecycle. 2. How do you stay updated with the latest security threats and technologies? Staying updated with the latest security threats and technologies requires a multifaceted approach. I regularly follow reputable cybersecurity blogs, forums, and news sites such as Krebs on Security and ThreatPost. Participating in webinars and attending industry conferences helps me gain insights from experts. I also engage with professional networks like LinkedIn groups and cybersecurity associations. Continuous education through certifications and training courses keeps my knowledge current. Lastly, I subscribe to threat intelligence feeds and newsletters to receive real-time updates on vulnerabilities and emerging threats. 3. Can you discuss your experience with implementing a zero-trust security model? Implementing a zero-trust security model requires meticulous planning and execution. Initially, I assessed the existing infrastructure to identify vulnerabilities and access patterns. Then, I focused on establishing strict identity verification protocols, ensuring that every user and device is authenticated and authorized before accessing resources. I also incorporated micro-segmentation to limit lateral movement within the network. Continuous monitoring and adaptive security measures were implemented allowing for real-time responses to potential threats. This approach significantly enhanced the organization's security posture while maintaining operational efficiency. 4. How do you approach risk assessment and threat modeling when designing security solutions? When approaching risk assessment and threat modeling, I begin by identifying assets and their value. This involves understanding the system architecture and potential threat vectors. I conduct qualitative and quantitative assessments to evaluate risks based on likelihood and impact. Utilizing frameworks like Stride or Pasta aids in identifying threats and vulnerabilities. Engaging stakeholders ensures all perspectives are considered. I prioritize risks to align security measures with business objectives, ensuring a balanced approach that addresses critical threats while supporting operational needs. 5. What security frameworks are you most familiar with, and how have you applied them in your past roles? I am most familiar with frameworks such as NIST Cybersecurity Framework, ISO, IEC 27001, and CIS Controls. In my previous role, I implemented the NIST framework to create a risk management process that aligned with organizational goals. This involved conducting security assessments, identifying gaps, and developing a remediation plan. I also utilized ISO, IEC 27001 to establish an information security management system, ensuring compliance with industry standards. By applying these frameworks, I improved security posture, increased stakeholder confidence, and facilitated continuous monitoring and improvement of security practices. 6. Can you explain the core differences between ISO, IEC 27001 and the NIST Cybersecurity Framework? How do you determine which to use? The core difference lies in their focus and structure. ISO, IEC 27001 is a comprehensive management system standard emphasizing risk management, while NIST Cybersecurity Framework provides a flexible framework to improve cybersecurity posture. ISO 27001 requires an organization-wide approach to security management ensuring continuous improvement through regular audits. In contrast, NIST is more adaptable, allowing organizations to prioritize based on their specific needs. When choosing between them, consider regulatory requirements, organizational culture, and existing security practices to ensure alignment with business objectives. 7. Describe a challenging security vulnerability you addressed and how you designed a solution. One challenging vulnerability I encountered was a critical SQL injection flaw in a web application. Attackers could exploit this weakness to gain unauthorized access to sensitive user data. To address this, I implemented parameterized queries and input validation across all database interactions, effectively mitigating the risk. Additionally, I conducted thorough code reviews and introduced automated security testing in our CI, CD pipeline. 
training developers on secure coding practices further strengthened our defenses, ensuring that similar vulnerabilities could be identified and resolved proactively in the future. 8. How do you integrate security controls into cloud environments? Integrating security controls into cloud environments requires a comprehensive strategy. First, I assess the specific cloud service model, IAAS, PAAS, SAAS, and its security features. Next, I implement Identity and Access Management, IAM, to ensure only authorized users can access resources. Utilizing encryption for data at rest and in transit is crucial. Additionally, I employ security monitoring tools to detect and respond to threats in real time. Regular audits and compliance checks help maintain adherence to security policies and industry standards, ensuring a robust security posture within the cloud infrastructure. 9. What methods do you use to ensure network segmentation and its effectiveness? Effective network segmentation is critical for enhancing security. I utilize VLANs, virtual local area networks, to segregate traffic based on function and sensitivity. This segmentation minimizes the attack surface by limiting lateral movement within the network. I implement access control lists, ACLs, to enforce strict communication rules between segments. Regular audits and monitoring tools help assess the effectiveness of segmentation by detecting unauthorized access attempts. Additionally, I ensure that each segment is regularly tested for vulnerabilities to adapt to evolving security needs. Enhancing visibility through logging and analysis further supports ongoing effectiveness. 10. Explain how you would secure an API in a DevSecOps environment. Securing an API in a DevSecOps environment involves several strategies. First, implement authentication and authorization mechanisms such as OAuth 2.0 or API keys to ensure only legitimate users access the API. Next, apply input validation and output encoding to prevent injection attacks. Utilize HTTPS to encrypt data in transit and ensure secure communication. Additionally, employ rate limiting and throttling to mitigate abuse. Regular security testing, including static and dynamic analysis, should be integrated into the CI, CD pipeline to identify vulnerabilities early in development. Logging and monitoring are essential for detecting and responding to suspicious activities. 11. How do you ensure compliance with industry standards and regulations? Ensuring compliance involves several key steps. First, I conduct a thorough review of applicable industry standards and regulations relevant to our organization. This includes understanding specific requirements, such as GDPR, HIPAA, or PCI DSS. Next, I implement a compliance framework that integrates these requirements into our security architecture. Regular audits and assessments are conducted to evaluate compliance status and identify gaps. Additionally, I maintain documentation and provide training for staff to ensure everyone understands their roles in upholding compliance. Regularly updating policies and practices is essential to adapt to evolving regulations. 12. What strategies do you employ to educate end users about security risks and best practices? Educating end users about security risks involves a multifaceted approach. First, I develop tailored training programs that address specific threats relevant to the organization. Interactive workshops and simulated phishing exercises engage users, making learning impactful. Regular newsletters and updates keep security top of mind, while clear communication about policies ensures everyone understands their responsibilities. I also leverage gamification to encourage participation and reinforce concepts. Continuous feedback mechanisms help refine the education strategy, ensuring it remains effective and relevant in addressing evolving threats. 13. Describe your experience with encryption technologies and key management. Encryption technologies are crucial for safeguarding sensitive data. I have implemented AES, RSA, and TLS protocols in various projects, ensuring robust data protection. My experience includes managing encryption keys using tools like HashiCorp Vault and AWS KMSI focus on key lifecycle management, including generation, rotation, storage, and revocation, to minimize risks. Ensuring compliance with regulations such as GDPR and HIPAA has been a priority, so I establish policies around encryption standards and key access controls. This proactive approach helps mitigate risks associated with unauthorized access and data breaches while ensuring data integrity. 14. How do you prioritize security initiatives when managing multiple projects? When managing multiple projects, prioritizing security initiatives involves assessing risk levels, potential impact, and alignment with business objectives. I typically start by evaluating the criticality of each project and its associated risks. Collaborating with stakeholders helps identify which initiatives offer the most significant protection against threats. I also consider compliance requirements and industry standards, ensuring that essential security measures are implemented first. Regularly reviewing priorities allows for adjustments based on emerging threats or changes in project scope. Communication with teams ensures everyone is aligned on security goals. 15. Can you explain the difference between a vulnerability scan and a penetration test? A vulnerability scan is an automated process that identifies known vulnerabilities in systems, 
applications, and networks by comparing them against a database of vulnerabilities. It provides a comprehensive list of potential weaknesses but does not exploit them. In contrast, a penetration test is a simulated cyber attack that actively exploits vulnerabilities to assess the security posture of a system. It involves manual techniques and often requires skilled professionals to analyze the results and provide insights on risk and remediation strategies. Both are essential for a robust security strategy, but they serve distinct purposes. 16. What is your approach to incident response and crisis management within the architecture you design? My approach to incident response involves establishing a clear framework that includes preparation, detection, containment, eradication, and recovery. I prioritize developing an incident response plan that outlines roles and responsibilities, communication protocols, and escalation procedures. Regular training and simulations ensure that all team members are familiar with their roles during an incident. I integrate monitoring and logging tools into the architecture for real-time threat detection, enabling rapid identification and containment of security incidents. Post-incident analysis is crucial for refining the architecture and improving future responses. 17. How do you balance security needs with business objectives and operational constraints? Balancing security needs with business objectives and operational constraints requires a strategic approach. Firstly, I engage stakeholders to understand both security requirements and business goals. This collaboration ensures that security measures align with organizational priorities. I prioritize risk management by assessing potential threats and vulnerabilities while considering the impact on operations. Implementing adaptive security controls allows flexibility in response to changing business needs. Regular reviews and adjustments ensure that security remains an enabler, not an obstacle, fostering a culture of security awareness across the organization. 18. Have you worked with security automation tools? If so, how have you integrated them into security architecture? Yes, I have worked with various security automation tools such as SIEM systems, intrusion detection systems, and automated vulnerability scanners. Integration into security architecture involves establishing APIs and workflows that allow these tools to communicate with existing systems. For instance, I implemented a SIEM solution that automated log analysis and alerting, significantly reducing response times. Additionally, I created playbooks for incident response that leveraged automation to execute predefined actions, allowing teams to focus on strategic tasks while maintaining security posture. 19. Describe how you would secure data both at rest and in transit. Securing data at rest involves using encryption techniques such as AES, Advanced Encryption Standard, to protect stored information on databases and file systems. Access controls and permissions are implemented to ensure only authorized users can access sensitive data. For data in transit, protocols like TLS, Transport Layer Security, are employed to encrypt data as it travels across networks, preventing interception. Regular audits and monitoring are crucial in both scenarios, ensuring compliance with security policies while identifying and mitigating potential vulnerabilities. 20. What role does identity and access management play in your security designs? Identity and access management, IAM, is crucial in establishing a robust security architecture. It ensures that only authorized users have access to specific resources, thereby minimizing the risk of data breaches. IAM facilitates the implementation of the principle of least privilege, allowing users to access only what they need. Additionally, IAM solutions enable centralized control, making it easier to enforce security policies and monitor user activity. By integrating IAM with other security measures, such as multi-factor authentication and role-based access controls, organizations can significantly enhance their security posture. 21. How do you measure the effectiveness of your security architecture post-implementation? Measuring the effectiveness of security architecture involves several key metrics and methodologies. First, regular security audits and vulnerability assessments help identify weaknesses in the system. Incident response times and the frequency of security incidents provide insights into operational resilience. User feedback on ease of access versus security measures also offers valuable data. Additionally, aligning with compliance requirements ensures that the architecture meets industry standards. Finally, implementing continuous monitoring tools can help track security event trends allowing for ongoing adjustments and improvements. 22. Can you explain the CIA triad and its application in security architecture? The CIA triad stands for confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Each component plays a crucial role in security architecture. Confidentiality ensures that sensitive information is protected from unauthorized access, typically achieved through encryption and access controls. Integrity guarantees that data remains accurate and unaltered, often enforced through checksums and validation mechanisms. Availability ensures that information and services are accessible when needed, which can involve redundancy, file lovers, and robust recovery strategies. Balancing these three elements is essential for designing a resilient and secure system. 23. Describe a time when you collaborated with cross-functional teams to implement a security solution. 
In a previous role, I worked with development, operations, and legal teams to implement a new data protection policy. Our objective was to ensure compliance with GDPR while maintaining system performance. I facilitated workshops to identify each team's requirements and concerns, promoting open communication. We used threat modeling to assess risks and shared responsibilities for data handling. By creating a shared understanding and incorporating feedback, we successfully implemented the solution, enhancing security while ensuring user experience remained seamless. 24. What do you consider the most significant emerging threats, and how would you prepare for them architecturally? Significant emerging threats include ransomware, advanced persistent threats, APTs, and supply chain attacks. Architecturally, I would emphasize the implementation of layered security measures, including robust endpoint detection and response, EDR, solutions, real-time monitoring, and threat intelligence integration. Adopting a zero-trust model would ensure that all users and devices are continuously authenticated and authorized, reducing the attack surface. Regular security assessments and penetration testing are crucial for identifying vulnerabilities. Additionally, fostering a culture of security awareness among employees can mitigate risks associated with human error. 25. How do you handle conflicting priorities between security and usability or performance? Balancing security with usability and performance requires a strategic approach. I prioritize understanding user needs and business objectives to find a middle ground. Engaging stakeholders early in the design process helps to identify critical functionalities that must remain user-friendly. Implementing security measures that are seamless and transparent, such as single sign-on or adaptive authentication, can enhance both security and user experience. Regularly reviewing and testing these solutions ensures they don't hinder performance, allowing for adjustments based on user feedback and evolving threats. In today's competitive job market, being well prepared for a security architect interview is crucial. Understanding the top questions and formulating effective answers can greatly enhance your chances of landing the job. By focusing on key concepts and showcasing your expertise, you can stand out as a strong candidate. We hope this guide has equipped you with valuable insights to excel in your next interview. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe for more content that can help you on your career journey.